Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to talk about something which is not in my comfort zone, in the sense that I'm going to talk about beta cell replacement, things that I actually do not do in my clinical practice, so it might seem very much theoretical rather than actually what I do. So that's my flow of presentation as to why we need beta cell replacement, the types of stem cells, a review of outline of the techniques, that bit I'll probably be the minimum bit, the role of certain transcription factors, potential barriers to it, long-term measures and future perspective. So all of us who've been to med school and thereafter talk about stem cells. These are undifferentiated cells that can give rise to differentiated stem cells. And they are the building blocks for any tissues and organs. And they have a potential to regenerate to whatever you want by proliferation, transdifferentiation, which I'll talk about a little later. Compared to this, it would be much easier if you put in islet transplantations because you don't have to go through that process of stem cells and the further techniques that I'm going to talk about in a little. And of course, in the past, people have also gone for pancreatic transplant. It's usually been a combined pancreas kidney transplant and most of our patients will actually not fulfill criteria for that and therefore we are talking about something less invasive than an islet, than a pancreatic transplant. And one of the major problems is where will you get the donor from? It's not like the kidney that you can take out one kidney and give it to your kin. Here it's mostly a cadaver transplant which again is a problem and of course you have problems of immunosuppression. So when you are treating someone for beta cell replacement, what do you exactly want? You want to develop a cure of sorts by recreating physiological insulin secretion and normal blood glucose levels. So free from insulin injection is your first target. The second target is reversal of complications. Many of you would have read some of the papers in New England Journal of Medicine wherein even pancreatic transplant in adults with type 2 diabetes led to reversal of retinopathy, led to reversal of glomerular involvement and kidney disease even in type 2 diabetes. So this I thought was a very beautiful picture of a stem cell. This is what it looks like in high power electron microscopy. So there are certain characteristics of the stem cells that we need to know. First, the ability of self-renewal, clonality, the same clonal uh, cell will go on multiplying and potency, the ability to differentiate into different cell types. So you might start from something and become something else. This actually is a beautiful picture from Holt's textbook of diabetes itself. Now whenever we talk about stem cells, think that they are totipotent, pluripotent or multipotent. Now the totipotent and pluripotent is beyond our scope of discussion. Our scope of discussion predominantly would be on the multipotent stem cells. Now in that itself, you know you have mesoderm, endoderm and ectoderm. We are going to only talk about endoderm because that is from where most of the cells will develop and you will have predominantly mesenchymal stem cells. So totipotent, omnipotent, for example, if you're looking at fertilized oocytes and uh, embryonic, that we are not allowed to do anywhere on earth at this point of time because of ethical issues, because you will create altogether a new individual or human being from use of that. So the pluripotent has been used, but it is modified pluripotent. So you see there is an I before the PSC which says induced pluripotent stem cells, or you can have human embryonic stem cells, like I said, which in India right now you are not allowed to use. So the multipotent stem cells you are using is the mesenchymal stem cells. They can be found anywhere and they are oligopotent stem cells which can form one, two or multiple lineages. This is very important. You know, you get somebody who can become Tendulkar today, Anushka Sharma tomorrow, it's like that. The potency of that cell is like that. You can become anything. You can become the brain, you can become the kidney but you need something to tell the cell what do you become. That signaling is either by gene editing, which my previous speaker was talking about, or having certain transcription factors. 
So I'm not going to bore you with each of them. M maybe some of you would remember Foxo, the person who described it got a Nobel Prize about five or six years ago. And the steps of functional uh, beta cell development is very complicated, but I'll try and simplify it in one diagram. So if you look here, there is a stem cell that you've got. And from the endoderm, a mesenchyme, the endodermal stem cell, then you subject that to certain environmental factors, transcription factors, and in an environment of genes. It will become an endodermal cell. To that, you add those transcription factors, they will become a pancreatic multipotent cell. That means it can become an alpha cell, a beta cell, a delta cell, an epsilon cell. You, to that, you add even more transcription factors, it will become a prepancreatic cell. To that, you add certain more transcription factors, it will become a beta cell. So conceptually, looks very simple, but it is very complicated, which I'm sure even uh, you will agree. So the mesenchymal stem cells have been used to generate insulin-producing cells, as well as enhance islet engraftment and survival. Now, here you have to realize, when you have got these stem cells, you do not necessarily have that exact clustering of alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon, and the interconnection and the interworking of the cells. You know there is feedback of the alpha with the beta. That leads to good glucose control. And in humans, most of the stem cells that we have been using is in hematology and hematological malignancies. You harvest the bone marrow of the individual, treat it with certain immunosuppressant, and you get back the stem cells, and you put it back again into the what we call autologous stem cell transplantation or bone marrow transplant that we commonly talk about. That is the principle. So alternative approach is reprogramming of terminally differentiated beta cells. So we all talked about stem cell as one of the mechanisms, right? Now, in New England Journal of Medicine about eight years ago, there was a wonderful paper which said that in type 2 diabetes, you and I are treated patients with oral agents, insulin, and things like that, right? And we all say there is beta cell failure. What they demonstrated in that FOXO paper was the beta cells become alpha cells. So there is de-differentiation of beta cell into alpha cell over a period of time in type 2 diabetes. Is there anything that you can do, do to re-de-differentiate that alpha cell back into beta cell? So that's a kind of trans-differentiation of your already existing cells. So you are not having to get some stem cells from somewhere else. Now that principle has recently been proven to work in mouse model. So they've created a diabetic mouse model where the beta cell have become alpha cells. They have now trans-differentiated that alpha cell back to beta cell. So that is conceptually another principle through which you might be able to renew your beta cell which would be useful not just in type 1, but also in type 2 diabetes. So I'll just quickly go through some of these papers which are pretty complicated. Here, there is generation of pluripotent stem cells from patients with type 1 diabetes. And like I said, what are the approaches? Number one, differentiation of the adult stem cells. Differentiation from embryonic stem cells, which I told you is ethically not allowed. Reprogramming of adult cells and compounds that induced endothelial mesenchymal transition. This is relatively new concept, and my previous speaker already mentioned about micro-encapsulation. So we know from the Edmonton group in Canada that there is islet cell transplantation. So you can harvest islets from a cadaveric pancreas, and you can put it back into the type 1 diabetic individuals through the portal vein, and you will hope that these islets will go and lodge in the pancreas, derive some vascularity from the pancreas, and regrow there, therefore having that feedback system, because normally we take insulin subcutaneously, which goes to the systemic circulation. But in you and me, it is in the portal circulation that insulin is secreted. So that's the reason that they've done. So they've calculated ki kitna islets chahiye. As you can see, it's pretty high. And there are certain challenges. Major challenge, 60% is lost in the first few days because of hypoxia, because 
वहाँ पे वैस्कुलराइजेशन नहीं होता है वंस यू पुट इट इन इट डज नॉट नेसेसरीली गो एंड स्टिक देर देर इज एलो रिजेक्शन एंड ऑटो इम्यून रिएक्शन सी द बेसिक रीजन वाई द इंडिविजुअल हैड टाइप वन डायबिटीज वॉज ऑटो इम्यूनिटी यू हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू गेट रिड ऑफ इट सो देर आर अदर पेपर्स एज वेल विच दिस इज द फॉलो अप ऑफ द एडमिंटन ग्रुप फ्रॉम कैनेडा विच हैज डन द मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ आईलेट सेल ट्रांसप्लांटेशन इन द वर्ल्ड दे हैव शोन दैट एट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ओनली एट परसेंट रिमेन फ्री ऑफ इंसुलिन बट एट लीस्ट कॉन्सेप्चुअली दे हैव एक्चुअली बीन एबल टू शो दैट समथिंग वर्क यू कैन ऑलवेज रिपीट इट इफ यू हैव इनफ मनी एंड रिसोर्स पुअर डिफरेंशिएशन टू बीट अ सेल सो दैट कैन हैपन एंड वंस यू पुट इन दैट आईलेट थिंग्स डोंट वर्क देर सो एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच that is a problem and the second problem is whenever you are looking at all of these stem cells along with the cell you are giving so many transcription factors and other genes modified genes to make sure that that stem cell grows into your beta cells right so all of that might cause teratogenicity not only does the stem cell grow other things might grow if you are giving that so there are challenges so one of the things that people thought of is why don't we encapsulate the islets before pushing it in so that it does not get exposed to the antigenic environment of the individual where you are putting it in so i'll just try to be brief because time is running out so initially they went for macro encapsul mac encapsulation they took number of islets put it in a capsule put it back into the individual that did not seem to work that well so this is some of the data from there and what they did later on was micro encapsulations individually each islet was put in a capsule of alginate which would make sure that it is not targeted by the host in which you are injecting the uh, the islet cells and the long term results seem to be technological advancement ke karan seems to be better so the sites of encapsulation either the portal vein or you can directly put it into the peritoneal cavity which is much easier technically but again spontaneous vascularization is always a problem to increase the survival they have put certain compounds in the alginate microcapsules which often improve which is often coated with dexamethasone and immunosuppressant so this is some of those studies which i'm not going to bore you with and then we talked about gene editing and genetic approaches which is again a little complicated and immune tolerance of course just like we are now preventing progression into overt type 1 diabetes there are studies in which to show that whatever other forms of treatment you are using along with that if you reduce the t cell numbers with immunosuppressants with the calcineurin inhibitors and the mtor inhibitors the outcomes might be better so this is a summary of what i have talked about and i'll just talk about only one thing after the future so one is xenogenic islets so i told you getting cadavers human cadavers to get pancreas is difficult therefore to get islets from human cadavers might be difficult so we can do the same with pigs in the past we used porcine insulins as well so that could be one source that's a xenogenic islet that has been tried in couple of patients and these are the results of them cadaveric donor theoretically good but very difficult and beta cell proliferation through the tgf beta pathway so that and other cofactors so that the patient's own bad pancreas might be able to produce more beta cells and i already told you about the trans differentiation which has been successful in mouse model this is the last day before yesterday in nature you have this publication the first success in which stem cell reverses women's diabetes is a world's first so they have taken stem cells from the patient itself just like a bone marrow transplant from her own tissue they have harvested stem cells and that they have made with the help of the technology that i was theoretically talking about to convert into a pre beta cell which has then been pushed back into the individual and this lady as you can see two and a half months after the procedure is off insulin so this is a true kind of bone marrow transplantation this principle se hota hai same principle 
This is Nature Medicine, 26th September, 2024. So take home points. Beta cell replacement is the safest and least invasive transplant procedure. The cadaveric and the pancreatic procedure are very difficult. Donor shortage and immunosuppressant related problem is always a problem. Stem cells, differentiated beta cells are on demand. Physical barriers with the use of microcapsules improve outcome. Immune tolerance and genetically engineered insulin producing cells can be a solution. And xenogenic transplant and cadaver donors can be a future option. I think it's a very complicated talk, but I've tried my level best to simplify it. Thank you.